Welcome to Sinister Stories, where the shadows hold secrets and the night whispers tales of terror. I'm your guide through this realm of spine-chilling narratives. If you dare to journey with us into the heart of darkness, be sure to hit that subscribe button, like and share our videos, and don't be shy, leave us a bone-chilling comment below. Remember, true terror loves company. So, gather your courage, and let's embark on a journey you won't soon forget. Subscribe now, because the darkness awaits, and you wouldn't want to face it alone. Welcome to Sinister Stories, The Deceit. The first time I met him, it was as if the universe had conspired to bring us together. It was a cool autumn evening, and the leaves crunched beneath our feet as we crossed paths in the small, quaint town square. James stood there, a beacon of warmth amidst the fading daylight. His smile was a kind of magic, genuine and inviting. It lit up his face, and for a moment, it felt as if time itself had slowed. His eyes held a glint of mischief, like a secret he was waiting to share. They sparkled with an inner light, drawing me in like a moth to a flame. We exchanged pleasantries, our words dancing in the crisp evening air. There was a natural ease to our conversation, a rhythm that felt like an echo of something long awaited. Every sentence, every shared laugh, seemed to deepen the connection between us. As we talked, I couldn't help but notice the subtle details that made James stand out. The way his hair tousled in the breeze, the faint scent of earth and woods that clung to him. He had an air of mystery about him, a magnetic pull that left me yearning to know more. The hours slipped away like grains of sand through an hourglass, and as the night descended, James extended an invitation to continue our conversation over a cup of tea at a nearby cafe. It felt like the most natural thing in the world, as if we were both surrendering to a force greater than ourselves. As we sat in that cozy corner of the café, sipping on warm tea, our words flowed effortlessly. It was as if we were two souls who had known each other for a lifetime, reunited in this moment. James shared stories of his travels, his eyes lighting up with a childlike wonder, and I found myself hanging on his every word. The atmosphere around us seemed to hum with a quiet magic, the air charged with a palpable energy. It was a meeting that felt destined, a collision of two worlds that had been hurtling toward each other across the vast expanse of time. As the night grew darker, and the streets outside grew quieter, we reluctantly parted ways, promising to meet again soon. That first encounter lingered in my thoughts, a memory painted in shades of gold and warmth. It was a beginning, an enchanted chapter that whispered promises of a love that would conquer all. As our relationship deepened, so did the mystery surrounding James. He was an enigma, a puzzle with missing pieces that I longed to uncover. Whenever I tried to broach the subject of his past, his gaze would flicker, like a candle threatened by a gust of wind. He would divert the conversation, steering it away from the shadows that clung to his history. There were moments, late at night, when I would catch him in a distant reverie. His eyes, usually bright with warmth, would grow distant, lost in the recesses of his thoughts. It was during these moments that I felt a subtle shift in the air, as if a curtain had been drawn to reveal a hidden chamber in his soul. It was these glimpses that sent a chill down my spine, a seed of doubt planted in the fertile soil of my trust. What was he hiding? What secrets lurked behind those dancing eyes and warm smiles? One evening, as the sun dipped below the horizon, painting the sky in hues of orange and pink, I mustered the courage to ask him about his family. The words hung in the air, pregnant with expectation, but James' response was a deft sidestep, a dance of evasion that left me more puzzled than before. I couldn't shake the feeling that he was constructing a facade, carefully weaving a tapestry of half-truths and omissions. The more I tried to unravel the threads, the more entangled I became in the web of his deceit. And yet, despite the growing unease, there were moments of tenderness that swept me off my feet. His laughter, genuine and warm, would fill the air like a melody, erasing the shadows that clung to the edges of our love. The touch of his hand against mine was a lifeline, grounding me in a reality that felt increasingly fragile. As the days turned into weeks, I found myself torn between the warmth of his embrace and the ever-present specter of doubt. Each caress carried a weight of uncertainty, each whispered promise a hollow echo in the chambers of my heart. And so, I walked a tightrope, 
balancing on the precipice of a truth I feared to uncover. The enchantment of our beginnings was now clouded by the looming question, who was James, really, and what secrets did he guard so fiercely? The night was painted in shades of indigo, the moon casting its silvery glow through the dense canopy of trees. James and I walked hand in hand, the forest around us alive with the gentle rustle of leaves. There was a sense of magic in the air, a feeling that whispered of secrets waiting to be uncovered. As we ventured deeper into the woods, a peculiar tension settled over us, a subtle shift in the atmosphere. It was then that I saw it, a figure, barely discernible, lurking in the shadows. Its form seemed to blur and meld with the night, like a wisp of smoke given shape. But its eyes were unmistakable, two orbs gleaming with an otherworldly light, fixated on us. My breath caught in my throat, a cold wave of fear washing over me. I turned to James, my voice barely a whisper, did you see that? He hesitated, his grip on my hand tightening just a fraction. His eyes darted towards the shadowy figure before quickly snapping back to me, a forced smile tugging at his lips. It's probably just an animal, love. No need to worry. But I couldn't shake the unease that settled in my chest. The figure remained, a silent sentinel in the depths of the woods, its presence suffocating the very air around us. Every instinct screamed at me to flee, to escape the oppressive gaze that seemed to pierce through the darkness. James, sensing my unease, took a step forward, attempting to pull me away from the enigmatic figure. His voice held a strained edge, an undercurrent of urgency. Let's go, darling. It's getting late. I allowed myself to be led away, my eyes never leaving the spot where the figure had stood. The memory of those luminous eyes haunted my every waking moment, a chilling reminder that the world held secrets far beyond my understanding. That night, as I lay in bed, the darkness seemed to press in around me, suffocating and oppressive. I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched, that unseen eyes bore into my very soul. Sleep remained elusive, chased away by the lingering presence of the enigmatic figure. In the days that followed, I couldn't shake the image from my mind. I spent hours researching old legends and tales of the woods, searching for any clue that could explain what I'd witnessed. Each page I turned, each story I read, only deepened the mystery. The weight of suspicion settled like a stone in my chest, a constant reminder that the world held secrets I could scarcely fathom. And so, the memory of that night lingered, a haunting specter that wove its way into the fabric of my reality. The forest, once a place of enchantment, now held a darker allure, concealing secrets that threatened to unravel the very foundation of my understanding. And with each passing day, the line between reality and illusion grew ever thinner, leaving me teetering on the precipice of a truth I feared to uncover. Doubt gnawed at me like a relentless predator. The nights grew longer, and my restless mind poured over old legends and whispered tales of creatures that walked the line between worlds. I searched for any clue that could explain what I'd witnessed in the woods, hoping to find some rational explanation for the haunting figure that had invaded my dreams. The weight of suspicion hung heavy in the air, a suffocating fog that clouded my every thought. James, once the source of comfort and solace, had become an enigma, his every word and gesture a puzzle waiting to be unraveled. He deflected questions about his past with practiced ease, steering conversations away from topics that might reveal the truth. I found myself scrutinizing his every move, searching for signs of deception. There were moments when his gaze would linger just a bit too long, his eyes holding a hidden depth that sent a chill down my spine. It was as if he was concealing a secret, one that he feared would shatter the fragile illusion of our love. The days stretched on, each one bringing new layers of uncertainty. I caught glimpses of James in moments of vulnerability, when his guard slipped and I glimpsed the turmoil beneath the surface. He seemed haunted, as if a darkness clung to him, threatening to consume him from within. Late at night, I sat hunched over dusty tomes and weathered pages, my fingers tracing the faded ink of ancient texts. I devoured stories of shapeshifters and creatures that lurked in the shadows, searching for a connection, a thread that might lead me to an understanding of what I had seen. The words blurred together, the lines between reality and fiction blurring into a surreal tapestry of fear. In my heart, 
I yearned for the James the first had first met, the man with the warm smile and the eyes that sparkled with light. But the more I sought, the more the distance between us grew. Our love had become a fragile construct, built on shifting sands and veiled in half-truths. The nights echoed with the silence of unspoken questions, the unspoken truths that hung heavy in the air. I longed for clarity, for the reassurance that our love was real, untainted by the darkness that seemed to cling to James. But as the days passed, I couldn't shake the feeling that the truth would be more terrifying than I could ever imagine. The air hung heavy with tension as I stood before James, my breath coming in ragged gasps. His features contorted, his once warm gaze now cold and calculating. The room seemed to close in around us, the walls pressing in like silent witnesses to the impending storm. You can't possibly understand, he hissed, his voice a venomous whisper. The hunger, the power. It consumes me. His words hung in the air, a chilling admission that sent shivers down my spine. It was as if a curtain had been drawn back, revealing the true nature of the man I thought I knew. He was no longer James, the charming and magnetic figure that had captured my heart. He was something darker, something primal and insatiable. As he spoke, his words seemed to slither through the air, worming their way into the deepest recesses of my mind. It was a twisted seduction, a macabre dance of manipulation that left me paralyzed, my thoughts spiraling in a maelstrom of fear and disbelief. I thought. I thought we had something real, I stammered, my voice barely above a whisper. But you're just using me. A cruel smile played on James' lips, a sinister glint in his eyes. It was a look of triumph, of a predator reveling in its prey's vulnerability. He took a step closer, the space between us shrinking, the air growing thick with menace. You were never more than a means to an end, he sneered, the mask of civility slipping away to reveal the true nature of the beast before me. In that moment, a surge of defiance coursed through me. The fear that had once held me captive began to ebb, replaced by a steely resolve. I would not be a pawn in his twisted game any longer. With a surge of adrenaline, I turned and fled, leaving behind the suffocating atmosphere of the room. The hallway stretched out before me, a labyrinth of shadows and uncertainty. Every footstep echoed like a drumbeat, a testament to my desperate flight from the darkness that threatened to consume me. As I raced down the stairs, the world seemed to blur into a whirlwind of motion and sound. Panic gripped my chest, urging me onward, driving me to escape the clutches of the monster I had once called love. Outside, the night air was a welcome balm, cool and invigorating against my flushed skin. I stumbled into the open, the expanse of the world stretching out before me. The moon hung high in the sky, casting an ethereal glow over the landscape. I knew I couldn't stay. The truth had been laid bare, and the illusion of our love shattered. The road ahead would be treacherous, fraught with uncertainty and danger. But I would face it with a newfound strength, a determination to reclaim my life from the clutches of the skinwalker. And so, I set out into the night, the echoes of our confrontation still ringing in my ears. The path ahead was uncertain, but I would forge it with unwavering resolve, leaving behind the deceit and embracing the promise of a future unknown. The night was heavy with shadows, and the moon hung low in the sky, casting an eerie glow upon the forest. Every rustle of leaves seemed to echo through the stillness, a haunting reminder of the world closing in around me. Fear clenched at my chest, a vice-like grip that threatened to suffocate me. With trembling hands, I packed a small bag, hastily grabbing essentials, a change of clothes, some food, and the few mementos that held fragments of the life I once knew. Each item I touched felt like a lifeline, a fragile connection to a reality slipping away. As I stepped outside, the air was thick with foreboding, the silence broken only by the distant calls of nocturnal creatures. The path ahead seemed to stretch endlessly, the darkness alive with unseen terrors. The woods, once a place of solace, now felt like a labyrinth of looming shadows and twisted branches, reaching out like gnarled hands, urging me forward. Every rustle, every whisper of leaves, sent me into a panic. My heart raced, pounding like a drum in my chest, drowning out even the sound of my own footsteps. Each breath was a struggle, a battle against the suffocating dread that threatened to consume me. 
I dared not look back, for fear of what might lurk in the depths of the night. The moonlight danced through the trees, casting fleeting, ghostly shapes that seemed to mock my desperate flight. The path twisted and turned, a maze of uncertainty that seemed to lead nowhere, and yet I pressed on, driven by a primal instinct to escape. Time seemed to blur, the minutes stretching into hours, until the world around me became a nightmarish blur. Trees loomed like silent sentinels, their branches clawing at the sky, their shadows merging into a grotesque tapestry of terror. Each step felt like a leap into the abyss, a plunge into the unknown. Every sound, every shadow, became a potential threat, a cruel reminder that I was never truly alone. Paranoia clung to me like a second skin, a constant companion in the suffocating darkness. The night seemed to stretch on forever, a never-ending expanse of fear and uncertainty. Finally, as the first light of dawn began to pierce the horizon, I stumbled upon a remote town. The buildings stood like silent sentinels, their facades offering a deceptive sense of security. The people, kind and welcoming, went about their daily routines, oblivious to the storm of fear that raged within me. I sought refuge, my heart pounding as I entered a small inn. The warmth and light offered a brief respite from the relentless night. But even here, in the heart of the town, I couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. Every friendly smile held a sinister undertone, every gesture of kindness felt like a trap. As I settled into a dimly lit room, exhaustion washed over me, mingling with the lingering dread that clung to my every thought. The night had been a desperate battle, a harrowing journey through a world transformed into a haunting tableau of terror. And yet, I knew that the skinwalker was still out there, lurking, waiting, the nightmare far from over. The days became a blur of constant motion, a dance of shadows and uncertainty. I moved with the quiet urgency of a hunted creature, always one step ahead, always vigilant. Every corner turned, every alley crossed, felt like a calculated risk. Each stranger's face held the potential for danger, their eyes harboring secrets that could betray me to the one who hunted me. As the sun dipped below the horizon, casting long, creeping shadows across the pavement, my heart quickened its relentless beat. The city streets, once familiar and bustling, now seemed foreign and foreboding. The echo of footsteps behind me reverberated through the narrow alleyways, a haunting reminder that I was never truly alone. Every time a passerby approached, my breath hitched, and my pulse quickened. I would steal furtive glances, searching for any sign of recognition, any hint that they were an accomplice to my impending doom. Faces contorted and merged in the dimming light, becoming grotesque masks of terror in my mind's eye. I sought refuge in the anonymity of crowded places, but even there, the fear followed me like a relentless shadow. The cacophony of voices and footsteps was a symphony of dread, a constant reminder that danger lurked just beyond the edges of my vision. Nightfall was my sworn enemy, bringing with it a suffocating cloak of darkness that seemed to amplify my paranoia. Every distant sound, every rustle of leaves, sent a jolt of adrenaline coursing through my veins. The world had transformed into a nightmarish tableau, where reality and illusion merged into a chilling tapestry of terror. Sleep was elusive, a fragile respite that I dared not fully embrace. The bed, once a sanctuary, now felt like a vulnerable island in a sea of uncertainty. Every creak of the floorboards, every sigh of the wind, sent me bolting upright, heart pounding in my chest. With every passing day, the weight of my own suspicion settled like a stone in my chest. I changed my appearance, adopting disguises that felt flimsy and inadequate. I altered my name, my identity, but it was never enough. The skinwalker was a specter that haunted my every waking moment, a malevolent presence that seemed to seep through the very fabric of reality. And so, I continued to move, to hide, to live in the perpetual dance of evasion. The world outside had become a twisted funhouse, where every face held the potential for betrayal, every gesture of kindness felt like a trap. The relentless pursuit showed no sign of waning, and I knew that my only chance lay in staying one step ahead, in outsmarting the darkness that sought to consume me. The small town offered a fragile sanctuary, its quaint streets lined with charming houses and welcoming faces. It was a place where the pastel hues of the building seemed to reflect the serenity that had eluded me for so long. But beneath the facade of warmth, 
paranoia had become my closest companion. I moved through the cobblestone streets like a phantom, my steps cautious, my eyes constantly scanning for any sign of danger. Every friendly smile held a sinister undertone, every gesture of kindness felt like a trap waiting to snap shut. The world had become a hall of mirrors, where every reflection seemed to distort reality, warping it into a nightmarish funhouse. Nights were the worst. The darkness seemed to close in, suffocating me with its oppressive weight. Every shadow held a potential threat, every rustle of leaves a harbinger of impending doom. Sleep was a distant memory, replaced by restless hours spent on high alert, my senses strained to their limits. As the days stretched into weeks, the feeling of being watched became a constant, gnawing presence. Faces in the crowd blurred and shifted, merging into one nightmarish visage. I dyed my hair, changed my clothes, even altered the way I walked, but it was never enough. The skinwalker was relentless, a malevolent specter that seemed to seep through the very fabric of reality. I sought refuge in the forgotten corners of the town, places where the shadows clung a little tighter, where the echoes of forgotten stories whispered through the air. It was in those hidden alleys and abandoned buildings that I hoped to find a shred of safety. But even there, the sense of foreboding lingered, an unshakable reminder that the nightmare was never far behind. With each passing day, my grip on reality grew more tenuous. The line between truth and illusion blurred, leaving me in a constant state of disorientation. Faces twisted and contorted, merging into grotesque masks of terror. The world became a kaleidoscope of distorted images, each one a potential threat. And so, I continued to wait. Wait for the moment when he would return, when the nightmare would begin anew. The skinwalker had slipped through my fingers once, but I knew that he was out there, living my life, wearing my face. The thought gnawed at the edges of my sanity, a relentless dread that refused to let me go. In the quiet moments, when the town slept and the world outside seemed to hold its breath, I could hear it. The faintest whisper of footsteps, the echo of a presence just beyond the edge of perception. The skinwalker was coming. And this time, I vowed, I would be ready. For joining us on this bone-chilling journey into the world of sinister stories. If you've got a taste for terror, make sure to hit that subscribe button, so you never miss an eerie tale. And if you felt your spine tingle during this video, show us some love by giving it a thumbs up. It really helps spread the fear. Share the fear with your fellow thrill seekers on your favorite social media platforms. Together, we can create a community of true horror aficionados. And now, it's your turn. Dive into the comments and share your thoughts, your own spooky experiences, or suggest stories you'd like to hear in the future. Remember, the darkness has its own stories to tell, and we're here to unearth them. Until next time, stay sinister.